Oh yeah. Ah, there you are. Hi, yeah, it's uh, Xavier, and uh, welcome to my uh, my bonsai retreat. And we're looking at this from a slightly different angle. Excuse the pun. Um, no, this um, this Japanese lunch I got back in 2015. Um, I paid I don't know 15 pounds for it off eBay, along with a load of junipers. It's featured before in uh, a lot of my bonsai basics about pruning large, where I get in get in close and really look at this as a potential bonsai. But this tree, I made so many mistakes on. And looking down, I thought it was the best way of showing just what I was trying to achieve with it. But it's taken me eight years to get the sort of growth that really, if I'd thought about what I was doing, I should have got in one or maybe two years. So I reckon, all in all, I'd probably put this tree back anywhere between four and five years because I didn't know what I was doing. And we'll get in close in a minute. But when you're doing something like this, which is a cloud larch, you've got to make your decisions very, very early on. The trunk first. And I know everyone will say, oh, no, roots first. To be fair, this tree isn't going to be identified by its, um, its root structure or its nabari. This is going to be identified by the unique pad structure, those cloud pads. And that's what people will look at. It doesn't mean you ignore what's going on down there. And as you'll see in a minute, it's quite good down there. But um, what you really want is to get nice, thick, tapering S trunk which you'd get with your, your Chinese elms and stuff like that, but also a nice broad set of pads developing. And if you have a look at some pictures that are probably coming up now, either straight across me, because they're better to look at than I am, you'll see over the years that the biggest mistake I probably made was to pull these in too tight, too close for the first, certainly the first three years, I kept pruning back and I was pruning for ramification when I still needed to be getting length and thickness and the end result was was I just kept cutting it back and this is something that is common to bonsai you know we're so eager to prune a tree that we'll keep cutting back to you know two buds or to two leaves and forget entirely what it is we need to achieve first which in this case this needs to be longer thicker than this and this so there is a way to approach that and uh, should we talk about that now shall we because my neck hurts, I really want to talk to you over there. Well, I think this is a bit better and certainly you shouldn't be getting the glare off the, uh, the uh, baldy spot. But, um, yeah, it's all about perspective and I think from up there hopefully you'll have seen um, the pad development that's happened. Um, but now we can look at the fact that what we haven't got is the sort of thickness of trunk that really after eight years it should have been a lot better and the way I'd have driven that thicker trunk to let these go out like several feet probably and then just kept these proportionately cut further in so none of the energy going to the top all the energy going to the bottom and we've seen that in countless other videos but this really is although you may think it's looking great now and I will be pruning it in a second um, I really really put it back a long way just because I didn't use some basic bonsai knowledge that sometimes we need to make sure we've grasped and that's why often Although we hate going on about there are some techniques, there are some basic fundamentals that even a great big thickhead like me needs to get under the belt. And you know, if you're not worried about the roots, then you've got to look back at your trunk. Once you're happy with your trunk size or that's in proportion to what you want, then you can move on to your, your structure, your primary, secondary structure. And then you start thinking about how will that structure be in relation to higher up the tree. And if you get any one of those wrong, then you stuff the whole tree up which is really what I did this time round. And in terms of the, uh, the root structure or that we've actually got here, the surface roots, we've actually got a good plane of roots here and here. And we've got another one off here. And, and that's pretty good. There's absolutely nothing that I can see yet coming from the back, but that'll be something when I do the repot that I'll need to investigate. With this top part, all I want to do is keep it nice and short. I'm not even looking at this right now. I just don't want the growth going here. So I will go all the way back as I always do, looking for buds right at the base. And even that, to be fair, I could just cut them right off, but it's nice to have some sort of, some sort of new growth. So we'll keep that really, really tight. Okay, um, again here, 
not really interested at all. Although there is nice little pads starting to form here. And we're just going to control all these upper ones. Also just checking to see whether we've got bugs or anything like that because they actually do like to get the uh, aphids of sort in there. And as you know, again, I'm just looking for those little bud points. Um, we've got something in the crutch there I don't want. Definitely want to keep our crutches clean. But what I have got is a very nice division happening up here, so that's, that's good. I mean, what I will say is that although I haven't got the thickness and everything that I was looking for, that will come um, proportionally. It's just going to take, I don't know, maybe another 10 or 15 years rather than having got it in three years. But hey, we can wait that long, can't we? So what I will say is I have got a load of ramification all over this tree. Um, I'm not actually looking for there to be any particular flush of growth. We're quite late now. But this would, count as, this would count as that third ramification push that you can often get with a healthy larch. Okay, so this is the, the basically the top, or the, I won't call it the apex, because that would be the apex, but this is the top third region where I really want the, no growth really to come. Start looking further down and, hey, what a guess. You're going to leave it a little bit more this time. Okay, now this, there's a great raft of growth here um, and I will bring this back quite considerably and I'll also start looking on this one about stuff that I really don't want. And again, it's exactly the same process. Looking for those buds if I don't like where they are. That's actually, if you look at it, quite a long, horrible bit. Um, and it's pointing outwards. I really, really probably don't want that. And that's what we call coarse growth. So it's going to be out of proportion to what I'm trying to grow around it. So let's get rid of it. Um, I'm not looking for anything to come up. So this, this one that's growing upwards here, we'll get rid of that. Bringing this pad back, we've got on these, there's nice two buds there, a bit of length there, and I'll just give this a little bit more length at the top here, at the, in the middle portion. And what you're always going to be aware of is this is going to be the overarching on this side, so there's nothing lower on this side, so we don't need to worry about how tall it is beneath, but proportionally you want the lower bit to go out even further. So I'll just keep, I'll just keep coming around here. Now, what you'll notice with the growth of large is that this is a nice long piece, but it's actually overgrown this piece at the back. So I can rectify that, and that means doing either heavy pruning on this coarse piece and the coarse piece that's at the back, which is what I've done. And as I say, just trying to remove some of these coarser pieces. Now the thing about the coarser pieces is that you'll see them about much better when we get to springtime. And that's when I'll really look at this properly, but right now I just don't want it to be wasting energy in places that I don't want it to. There's another example. You've got this great big length here. Um, and in comparison to the rest of it, it's out of scale and it's definitely it's just too long an internodal distance. So I'll cut it right back. Okay, and if you can see there, we've got nicely cut back pad structure there. Um, and as I say, in the April or in the spring, I'll have a much better look at that and get a feel for where I actually want next year's buds to be uh, pointing out to. Same as you go up. Which leaves us with that growth there, which is the lowest pad and the one that I'm gonna leave the longest. And then we come down, we've got this lovely wide pad, and if you compare it to really early pictures, uh, massive difference. Don't want this high bit there. So I've got a, a bud there, I'm going to take that off. In fact, we don't want this one crossing into it. Get that off. Got a great big broad piece there. Take that back. Um, now the difficulty is, is that 
you end up pruning back too far and I've done that many times so I'm going to leave some bigger rougher pieces on to bring it further out for now just get some uh, control and direction into that and always remember lower down I might create different pad levels as well got this one going all the way under but again I may drop that pad down and wire to create the different levels and layers and I've got to start thinking that way that wiring will be done next year so I'm going to keep length on these just to uh, to give myself those options I'm not worried about cutting the ends there they'll brown off and die um, so I am thinking about how I'm going to wire this down there this one may come up higher that'll allow space for this one to grow a pad in and that'll give the depth to the pad same here that could actually end up being a higher pad so I need to make sure I keep a bit of length on it to support it for what I want to do and that's the other reason not to go too gung-ho with your pruning that is basically it okay so again nothing you learned from there about I can't hammer it home enough make sure you develop things in the right order or all you're going to do is give yourself a lot of workload and also massively increase the time it takes to get the bonsai to the point you want but the good thing about that is if, if you get it in the wrong order it doesn't mean you can't eventually achieve what you want you just got to wait a bit longer I'll get to have a, a decent look at where the buds are next year I will probably apply, apply a bit of wire as well to create um, better pad layers here so we can start getting a bit of depth to what is at the moment still very single level single layer and I'm at the point where next year again I'm going to let those go out as far I'll feed this heavily and again I'll do the proportional pruning so I'll leave these out long these will come in shorter shorter nothing and as I say the top the top third I, I won't let any growth really happen there at all everything has to go to these branches here which will eventually thicken this up as well feed it heavily I've got loads more larch as you know I have and if anyone who lives anywhere near me and is actually looking for larch Japanese larch or oaks I've got loads of those then you're more than welcome to pop in phone me up send me an email or even reply on a comment and I'll, I'll let you know but I have got another larch one that I think you saw the repot of either this year or last year but hasn't been pruned but I'm going to show it to you because it's pretty impressive <laughs> And that's this one here, um, absolutely, it was a, uh, a Yamadori recovered from Wales. I managed this to be Welsh larch actually, rather than Japanese larch, and uh, picked up in 2015 with quite a number of other of my Yamadoris. And uh, where are we now, 20, eight years later? It's, uh, it's coming on, I'm starting to build that ramification at the top. All I'm gonna do here, same sort of pruning techniques, but I'll do it onto this one. To be fair, it's probably nicer if you've got a, a bit of a 360 first. Mr. Uh, Hornbill Dinosaur, Mr. Spider, probably eat me if he uh, gets the opportunity. And uh, I mean, this is an incredible, an incredible piece of uh, material. Um, very, very unusual. I uh, love the Dawn Isaac ceramic. Well, you know, that's all of hers are going to be done Dawn Isaac. That's all I buy. Lovely, lovely. Love it. Beautiful. And it goes so well, I think, with this. And obviously, got a bit of the Japanese rock, which, who knows, that Japanese rock will probably get taken out one day because that's going to be much better suited to uh, a root on rock. I'm about to hand you back over to me, completing the uh, cloud larch. But, yeah, that was just... This one was more about... Um, tertiary ramification so just thinking about branch placement we've already got quite a lot of ramification on there it's just um, looking for opportunities for next year for where I'm going to be continuing to grow this this is really turning into a very very nice bonsai so anyway thumbs up if you like this one put a comment down as well and uh, back to me
Well, hopefully you uh, you liked how that turned out. Um, you know, all the larches are doing really well, and at this time of year, um, they're looking better than last year. But uh, from Xavier, in his bonsai retreat, um, enjoying the fact that we've actually got mist before we uh, suddenly break into another full sun, 28 degrees. Um, desperately hoping that my new carving tool will arrive so I can finish off carving my um, my privet. I've forgotten where I was going. Where was I going? Can someone tell me in the comments where I was going with that? Uh, <laughs> nowhere, nowhere special. Anyway, from Xavier, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for taking the time. Please comment, please like, please share. I love it, the algorithm loves it, and um, you like it too. It makes you feel really good when you do a thumbs up or, or you say something positive. You feel like you're doing something really good for the world, and uh, you can't beat that feeling. So do that. Anyway, happy bonzo and God bless. Cheers. Thank you.